The discussion of free grace theology is a discussion among evangelical friends, and we just differ on some points of doctrine that I think have significance, but they're it has to do with emphasis a lot more than with absolute differences. Free grace theology is a complex of ideas related to the central concept that we should be able to give people clear assurance that they've been saved and not look at evidence in their life as a measure of whether they should have assurance of salvation or not. People who hold to a so-called free grace position would downplay the need for repentance from sin and would say that we trust in Christ alone for salvation and that doesn't necessarily involve any turning from sin. And my response is, no, the New Testament pr perspective is we turn from sin in repentance and turn toward Christ in trust to forgive us our sin, to save us from our sin that we've turned from. Uh, that's an internal resolve or decision to turn from sin. It doesn't mean we're adding good works to our salvation uh, or to our um, justification. But it does mean that there's a, there are two aspects to faith in Christ. There's a turning from and a turning to. And so we differ on whether the need for repentance should be even spoken about uh, when sharing the gospel with non-Christians. And my response on that is uh, the New Testament frequently uses the word repent when it talks in repentance, when it talks about unbelievers coming to faith. And then there's a difference in the nature of saving faith. The difference between an intellectual, a mere intellectual agreement with the facts and a personal trust in Christ as a living person. And what I mean by that is uh, at least one of the representatives of Free Grace Movement has said this, do you believe that George Washington was the first president of the United States? If so, that gives you an idea of what belief is, what faith is. And in the same way, he would say, do you believe that Jesus uh, is the Son of God who came as a man and died to pay the penalty for your sins? Well, if you believe those facts, then you are born again. You're saved. And my response is, there's more than believing in facts. There's me as a person putting trust in Christ as a living person who relates to me and is present with me and who hears me and sees me and knows me, even though he's not visible to me. But he's present. And so, um, come to me, says Jesus, come to me in Matthew 11, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's a picture of coming personally to Jesus, receiving him in the language of John 1, um, opening the door and welcoming him into our lives in the uh, language of Revelation 3.20. Uh, the New Testament has repeated emphasis on coming to know Christ as a person. So it's not just knowing facts about him, but it's uh, trusting in him. The, it's not a perfect example, but the example that I give is uh, I could uh, take numerous flights on American Airlines and um, look at their record of safety and they have millions of passenger miles with no crashes. And so I say, intellectually, I agree that it's a uh, safe to travel on American Airlines. But if I get on the airplane and I see my neighbor down the street who's the pilot on the plane and I've known him for years and I trust him to fly me safely, that's trusting in him as a person. That's different from trusting statistics and historical facts. And it seems to me that um, in the New Testament, people coming to Christ in faith come to him as a person and put their rest their trust in him as a person who knows them and relates to them individually. I would say the majority of people who follow the free grace movement would agree with that, and my response is yes, but it's not emphasized in your writing. The free grace movement would say, if someone claims to have trusted in Christ for salvation, then that shouldn't be questioned, and we should just give assurance to the person that he or she is saved. And um, my response is, uh, there can be in there can be cases where people place an intellectual assent to the gospel in place of personal trust, and they weren't really born again, and there's no change in their life. And so, um, if there's no change from a previous life of sin and disobedience, I would say that's grounds for telling the person there's a serious question about whether you are really saved. And the free grace movement would say, no, don't question the person's assurance 
of salvation. And my response is, but it's very important not to give people assurance of salvation if they're not saved. That's a horrible idea. So we disagree on that.